Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another really cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this Gottlieb Solar Ride pinball machine. And we are getting somewhere with it. So in our first video, we kind of looked it over and we did the ground mods on the boards in the back box. We messed with the displays a little bit and we've got it up and running. It was already up and running before, or at least booting. But we haven't really tested it or anything yet. Uh, and we are now down to, we need to mess with the uh, playfield a little bit. So I'm going to pop the playfield up and we're going to look at the bottom of it and then uh, see what needs done on it. We showed some of this in the first video, but uh, this thing is super clean. It's a clean machine, people. Super clean. We vacuumed it out made it even cleaner. Look at all that. Isn't that just a thing of beauty? I think this was 79 or so, something like that. Maybe 80, early 80. Even the bottom of the play field, super clean, very, very nice. It's very, very nice. Okay, so when we got it, one of the things that we did, we didn't film it, we did it after the last video, in between. One of the flippers had the uh, wrong style uh, I think they call it the shoe. No, they call it the bat, I think. So there's the plastic part that you hit the ball with that holds the plastic rubber, and then there's the metal part that holds it. Uh, so the I think the metal part is the bat, and the plastic part is the shoe, maybe. Something like that. Anyway, they were off of just a regular machine, and these Gottlieb's have, they use a smaller flipper rubber, so that one didn't match. So we had to swap that one. It was the biggest pain ever. We had to drill it out. Man, it was horrible. These little, uh, these little hex, uh, Allen wrench, hex head, whatever. It just would not come loose. So I think they probably had Loctite on it or something. But anyway, uh, we drilled it out. We finally got it out. We had to change the whole plunger and everything. Change the the bat all around and all of that but we have them matching now so we had to do that that's the only thing we've done so far on the bottom of the play field uh, there was a coil laying in the bottom that somebody had swapped at one point that was burnt up I think it looked to me like it was off of one of the pop bumpers but who knows so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to replace all of the light bulbs um, I'm going to test all of these little diodes down here to see if any of them are shorted. Uh, and I'm going to clean all of the switches. So I don't see um, I don't see anything really damaged on it. But while we've been messing with it, I've never seen all of these drop targets reset. So I don't know if that's working. So we may have a solenoid that's not working or whatever. Whenever we did the driver board, I tested all the transistors with a multimeter and they all seemed fine, but who knows? This thing does not have a great test menu in it. You can you can go through and uh, there's like a you, there's a button you can press and turn on all the light bulbs, but I think it drops out of it after a few seconds or something like that, so it doesn't, it's not really uh, too useful for actually testing anything but yeah I don't see anything wrong with it it's a nice clean machine but uh, I'll go through and I'll swap the light bulbs clean the switches and see if I find any more nonsense going on I don't see anything though and uh, come back and let you know what I find okay so I did all that stuff I, I couldn't there were I replaced all the light bulbs the uh, uh, there were several burnout, but the uh, the diodes all checked fine. Uh, the switches all look fine. The coils all look fine, so I couldn't find any problems. But we're going to go into test now and test uh, the lights, the switches, and the solenoids. So, like I said, they don't have a great test in this, but I'm pressing the test switch on the door. See, that's for step three down at the bottom there. Remember we went in in the last video and reset everything after we replaced the battery. I think 13 is the test mode. Okay, yeah. So 11 was the 
left displays and 12 is the right displays. Why they do it like that, I have no clue, but I'm sure there is a great reason. Okay, so I think if I go to the next one, we'll get our lights. Yeah. So you only have a few seconds and it goes off. Looks like they're, yeah. Okay. <laughs> One of these is a is a switch test too. Okay, so see how eleven came on. It's just a horrible test because you can't. It just doesn't stay in it very long. Like the light test, it was in it, what five seconds. All right, so the ten, the thirteen is on. I think that is a switch, and then we're back out to the. <laughs> Uh, why does it do that? Uh, so I guess a better way to test it is to just play it. So let's see if we can get her to start. Looks like the ball eject coil is not working. Eject coil. Well, that's a bad one to not work. You know, the one that kicks the ball out. Uh, advanced bonus bonus multiplier when lit. Okay, and then down here it says 500 and add bonus. 500. And it added the bonus. 500, and it added the bonus. 500, and it added the bonus. So let's see, advanced bonus multiplier. It's going to be this. 500 and bonus. Okay, so all that's working. On these, usually you don't get a situation where something doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It's just the switch will work or not work. So since it's, since it's, uh, since it's, working it's almost always going to score right too okay 500 and add extra bonus so it adds 300 hmm okay whatever 500 and add bonus 500 and add bonus Everything seems to be working. So the extra bonus is three. It must just be how it's designed. Everything seems to be working pretty good. Let's see if our pop bumpers work. Yes. Yes, they do. And they scored. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll stand up target. That's not doing crap. Hmm. So that stand-up doesn't work. Nor does that one. Is there another one? There's one up here. Nor does that one. Hmm. Three stand-ups don't <laughs> work. So we got a few things to fix, don't we? Okay, uh, let's see about this eject. And it ejected. So now we'll try this one. Maybe I should get some bonuses first so it doesn't bite me. And it ejected. Okay, so that's cool. Okay, so looks like, oh, the kicker. Boy, is she strong. And it looks like maybe there's not one over there. Yeah, that's just a stand up. 
So that stand-up does not work either. So the four stand-ups don't work, people. <laughs> Very important I change that three to a four. Okay, flippers, nice and strong. Right flipper, nice and strong. Okay, so it looks like everything works. Oh, plunger. Everything works. I don't have the, uh, wait, there we go. Looks like everything's cool. Oh, the drop targets. I didn't do any of the drop targets. Five hundred and add bonus. Okay, that worked. Oh, that worked. Oh, that worked. Center target special when lit. No, oh, that's pretty cool. So I guess if you get them in order and leave the middle one. Hmm. Should those have reset though? I've never seen that pop back up. So. Uh oh. You know what we got here? We have a fifth one that doesn't work. And then what do we have up here? Oh, you know what? It's stuck. I think that one. Yep, that was the whole thing. Hmm. The switch is bent. So it's stuck on. So because it's stuck on, well, I don't know what do we do to say about that? <laughs> All right. So yeah, the uh, the switch was stuck together. Sometimes whenever you put a, the ring on it, squeezes it a little bit too much. Alright, so the question is now, was that keeping the, was that switch being stuck keeping the out hole from firing? Could be. Uh, we need to see if at the end of the ball, if the drop targets reset. issues. See, it didn't reset the uh, drop targets, and surely it would have at the end of the ball. Drops won't reset. All right, did you hear the knocker, though, whenever we put it in test mode? When it did the coils, it actually... So there are three tones that it needs to make that are also solenoids. That's the lights. All of the lights work. So listen for listen. Okay, so the knocker did work. All right, so we need to uh, we need to look at some stuff on the schematics. Okay, folks. So we are looking at the schematics. And this is the area of the driver board that we are interested in. Now, this is an this is an interesting one. Um, let me make sure I've got this right. Yeah. Okay. So these are all of the lamps over here. Don't have a problem with that. It doesn't seem. And these are the coils. So on the the driver board was really. A simple little thing so you see where it says part of J1 that's that connector that comes down in between the the uh, C, the MPU board or CPU board and the driver board J1 so there is one line from the CPU for every solenoid that it wants to turn on 
So the CPU is actually controlling all of this stuff. Usually it's, well, I guess it's always the CPU, but usually it's, uh, uh, they've got some kind of matrix or something going on. Not on this one. There is one line for each solenoid coming from the CPU onto the driver board and then from the driver board to the, the actual coil. So the, the out hole coil is not working. Okay, so here are like uh, the, the knocker. You heard that work, so it's fine. Moving down. The tens chime, the hundreds chime, and the thousands chime. We heard all of that work, so it's fine. And then moving down, now we run into the problems. So the out hole does not work. Solenoid six and seven, the reason they have it listed like that is because they, since they use the driver board, remember this is, this is the first Gottlieb solid state machine. It was designed by Rockwell. It's all kind of, eh, what the hell are you thinking? Like they didn't do it the quite the perfect way, but uh, one of the things that they did was all of the schematics are kind of generic. So solenoid six and solenoid seven uh, is just how they labeled it in the schematics, but that is the two kicker, uh, I mean not kicker, the two uh, saucer uh, kickouts. So the one on the top left and the one on the bottom right, and both of those are working. So solenoid six, solenoid seven are working. And then solenoid eight. And so look, that's that one where we were looking at the driver board and they had the big uh, 2N3055, I guess it says. That's kind of a weird choice. Uh, that it uses to um, uh, as another driver. And then this Q29 turns that on. <laughs> so uh, it could be Q29 or Q45 are a problem. So solenoid eight is the one that does the the um, uh, drop target reset. Okay, so these are our two problems. So the out hole coil, I checked it with the multimeter, and it is fine. So how can you tell if it's fine? You put the multimeter on one lug, and then on the other lug, and then you see what the resistance is. It's a coil, so you should it that you should get a, a pretty low resistance. So for instance, on the out hole coil, we're getting like 17 ohms resistance or something like that, which means that it's connected so the coil should work right on the solenoid coil i mean not solenoid coil on the uh drop target reset coil on in the machine we're getting like three ohms resistance so you might think oh does that mean it's bad no that just means that it's a stronger coil if you get down below like two ohms it may be shorted but usually when they're shorted you're going to get like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 ohms, something really low like that. Now, it could it could be that it's shorted a different way, but usually it's it's really low like that. So the reason that it's 3 ohms is because it's just a strong freaking coil, which is why they're using the bigger transistor to fire it, and they're using it to reset five drop targets at the same time. So it needs to be strong enough to pull them all up at the same time. So that's what we need to look at. But what I'm going to do first is, now I already tested all of those whenever I had the driver board out. So I think they're fine, but uh, it could be that they test fine in the game, I mean out of the game, but just don't work under a load. So whenever, you know, the way you're testing them on a bench is you're just seeing if there's a voltage drop across the, the, the connections and uh, with your diode uh, check on your multimeter. And that checked out fine, but it could be that once you try it with actual juice, it just doesn't work. Or... It could be that the wire from the coil in the on the playfield up to this connector is not connecting all the way to the board properly. Or it could be that the wire from the uh, transistor that goes back through this connector up to the CPU isn't connecting properly. So we're going to test all of that stuff first. So we'll go look at the machine again. Okay, so if you're careful on these with everything turned off, you can lift up the play field and be in the back box at the same time. So I have wrote down which pin goes to what, right? And so, for instance, here is the out hole kicker, which, by the way, from the top moves just fine, so there's nothing physically jammed up on it. It doesn't look burnt up, and it didn't test with the multimeter burn up. The transistor doesn't test bad uh, on the driver board, but yet we're not getting anything, right? So uh, if you put a one lead here on the lug, 
and then remove the connector. It's connected all the way through to this connector, right? And then I did the same with the drop target reset coil. All the way up to its wire. Everything was cool. So then I plugged it back on and I checked from the drop target reset coil to the case of this transistor. And it's connected. So it's connect that proves that it's connected all the way through the connector and up onto the board. And then did the same with the out hole one, which is this one. And so they're connected all the way up to the driver board. So that, that rules out uh, the coil. That rules out the wiring. So now our problem is the driver board or the inner board connector. But remember, I repaired this damage that was down here. So it could, including this area right here around this chip. So it could be that uh, whenever I did that, I broke some traces or something that were barely holding together because of the battery damage. So that's going to be our next thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right down. Well, I know it's that one and that one. But I'm going to go right down which chip up here the uh, signal comes from, from the CPU, down to the driver board, and then see if everything's connecting good through here. Make sure that the signal's even making it through. All right, so I pulled the board just to double check all that stuff, and I'm happy to, to announce that the board is just fine. No problems on the board. But this intergalactic planetary, planetary, intergalactic, interboard connector is messed up. <laughs> so uh, something's going on with the connectors or something. It all looks so nice. But you do not get continuity. You get continuity from the chips to the edge connector and from the edge connector to the pin, but not through the wire to the other pin. So I'm going to have to replace the pins on the ends of the wires. So that's fun. That takes a little while. You can buy these too. Like I mentioned uh, in either this video or the other video, you can actually buy these that have diodes in line if your, if your driver board doesn't have those diodes. But here's the thing. So the out hole doesn't connect through, but the drop target one does connect through. So the drop target one, since it's that part of the board that uses a pre-driver and the big 2 and 30 55, I think it's just one of them's probably got something wrong. So after after I get this right, we're going to put it back in and test it again just to make sure that the drops don't work then. And if they still don't work, uh, I'll pull the driver board out and we'll we'll look at those two transistors again. One of them must be or a resistor or something's not working right. So I'm going to start replacing the pins on the wires. Okay, we got it mounted back in. I'm going to check our out hole. I don't oh, so I don't know if I mentioned before but the out hole wire wasn't connected. Now it is with the new pins and everything. But the uh, uh, the drop target one is showing continuity. So the the interboard connector is not the problem that we're having with the drop targets. So let's see if we fix the out hole a little. Very nice. Well, did you look at that? For all y'all that think I don't know how to play, look at that. Man, I am a pro. Look at that. Yeah, the Lord. My skills are getting greater. Alright, so it's doing its thing. Let's see if it kicks it back out. Alright, so it was a bad wire, apparently. So the drop targets are still not working. So I, I think that's going to be one of those transistors on the driver board. So I'm going to pull that back out. Okay, so the this controls the the uh, drop target reset, it tests fine. This is supposed to be an MPS U45, like these. Um, they had this in it, which I imagine is probably a good cross, or they wouldn't have put it in because it wouldn't have worked. They would have took it back out, whoever worked on it last. Um, and it tests fine too, so I don't know, something's acting up though. So uh, whenever this one broke off when we were working on the driver board on the last video, I replaced it with one of these CEN U45s, which worked fine. Um, and so I'm putting a CEN U45 as the pre-driver of this one. I'm just guessing that maybe this is the problem, but I don't know for sure. So if that doesn't do it, we're going to have to replace the 3055, but both of them test fine. 
the three resistors involved test fine too. So, got a tricky one here. It's not the wiring, we tested that from the board all the way up to here, that's fine. It's not the coil, we tested that, that's fine. It's not the wire from the CPU board down to the driver board, that tests fine. Um, so it's got to be this or this, I would think, even though they test all right. Okay, so under the 3055, that didn't fix it. So under the 3055, there's been massive heat, but you know, you, it's hard to tell if they've replaced it or not. So the, the mica insulator is all screwed up, which if they did replace it, they reused. And this sucker tests fine. Oh yeah, it says 88 on it. It's the date code of 88, so they would have played, replaced it at some point. But that still makes it 32 years old. So, so we're going to put one that's... Uh, they've changed the date codes. So we're going to try this one. And a new insulator. <laughs> So, I replaced the two transistors, didn't fix it, <laughs> which I should have known, because when I tested them, they were fine, but sometimes they test fine on a meter and they don't work, but they, it still doesn't work, so my drop targets are not resetting. So, I have checked and checked the wiring, and it's complete, folks, so the only thing left is I need to test the CPU board, I've got a problem on the CPU board. Which on these is scary, because if it's one of those spider chips, you are screwed. I have swapped them before. They, it can be done, but you don't really have a way of knowing if the... Uh, so if there was a problem, it would be that the... Yo, I'll solve it. If there was a problem, the spider chip for the solenoids would be screwed up, and you can't get a replacement of that, because it's just this weird chip that Rockwell made in 1977 or whatever, and they don't make them anymore. So... You could probably take one off of another board that maybe everything worked on, except the switch spider chip was screwed up. Who knows? But hopefully we won't have to come to that. But if we do, I'll film it for you. So here's what we're going to do, though. These two chips here run the solenoids. So one of these is the spider chip. I can't remember which one. But one of these runs these two, runs through these two, and turns on the transistors. So what I have done, a little tr old school trick from Clay at PenRepair.com. Uh, pen if you go to those 7417 chips and you write down the inputs and the outputs. So pin 1 is the input for, I think, the out hole. Pin 2 is the output. Pin 3 is the input for the uh, something else, whatever. Basically, the spider chip connects to pin 1, sends a 5-volt signal to pin 1 on that 7417, which makes pin 2 uh, send the signal on and make it work. So if you send a 5-volt signal to pin 1 and pin 2, you're checking that chip. So, for instance, if the input doesn't make the coil fire, but the output does, then you know that the 7417 is bad. If they both make the coil fire, then you know that the chip's fine. So these are the ones for one of the chips, and then these two here are for one of the other chips. So that's what we're going to try, people. So we're going to see if by doing by shorting 5 volts, which I'm getting with an alligator clip attached to the 5-volt capacitor up here, um, by shorting the inputs and outputs of these, we can test them. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm not going to test all of them because all of them work except for that one. You really only have to test the one, but I'll just show you how it, how it works. Now, you have to be very careful. <laughs> if you short a couple of them together, it might be problems. Probably not, though, since it's 5-volt logic. You know, if you short two together at the same time, you're just going to have two coils come on at the same time. But still, you want to be very careful. So I've got an alligator clip. I've got a little tiny screwdriver, and I'm going to very carefully touch it to one of the pins. There are better ways to do this, I'm sure. So uh, one and two are a, are a bundle. So one is the input on this one. So that's the eject coil. So that means if the spider chip sends a signal to pin one, it makes the eject coil work. So this chip is working, but you know, the out, since the input works, the output should too. You don't really have to test the output, but it's just telling you. Okay, so uh, this one is the one that's all of the solenoids that we already know work. This one over here only controls two solenoids. So the first one that it does is pin one. That's one of these kickers up here, the uh, 
the uh, saucer. So pin one and two make the saucer work. So three and four are my drop target reset coil. So if I've still got a problem from the wiring down, neither one of these will make the drop target reset coil fire. If both of these make the drop target reset coil fire, then that means that the spider chip must not be telling this chip to do it. That's why it's never doing it. If one of these uh, doesn't work and the other one does, it could be that this chip's bad. So let's check pin three. Nothing. Okay, so pin three doesn't work. That could mean we've still got driver board problems or whatever. And then pin four. Pin four works. Okay, so if you send a signal to the input, the drop target coil doesn't reset. If you send a signal to the output, the drop target coil does reset. So that means everything from here down works because when I short that output, it works. But either this chip, well, this chip's definitely bad because if you, if you short the input, it doesn't work. But do we know for sure that the spider chip is ever sending the signal? We hope so, but the first thing that we have to do is we're gonna have to replace that chip because it's definitely bad. So it's a 7417, so I'll pop the board back out and we will swap it and hopefully that'll get us going again. Put our socket in. All right. Let's see if that gets us anywhere. It may reset it when it boots. I don't know. Let's see. Well, isn't that just wonderful? Our spider chip is just fine, people. Wow! All right, folks, so we pretty much got it. So uh, we've got a couple little minor things left to do, but everything is working as it should. It's just a little minor cosmetic stuff. This one flipper's sticking a little bit, um, but we're pretty much there. So uh, we will wrap it up. Make sure to leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. We'll film a separate video of playing the thing with a lot of gameplay and stuff so you can see what it's all about. So look for that soon. So uh, leave your comments below. Let us know what you think, and if you got anything similar that you're working on, we try to answer questions for people. And make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Down below, there will be a link to Amazon. If you go to that link and buy anything on Amazon, anything, anything, a pack of bubble gum, a house, like Sears used to make, you could buy a house, you know, and uh, have it shipped to you. <laughs> if you buy anything, it gives us a little royalty for sending you there, and it doesn't raise your prices or anything. You don't have to do anything. You just follow that link if you find yourself wanting to purchase something from Amazon. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. I was just looking on there earlier, and somebody was buying some memory cards uh, just a few minutes ago. Thank you, whoever that was. We appreciate it. That's very kind of you. So you gave us some of Amazon's money. We love it. <laughs> so leave your comments below. Hope you can get your Gottlieb System 1 working as well as this one is. Um, where there's a will, there's a way, usually, right? 
And uh, we enjoyed having you. Hope you hope you enjoyed it and had a little bit of fun with the video. And we will see you on the next one.